in today's video, we'll be talking a little bit about cellular respiration. As you guys may know, cellular respiration is the process in which we go from glucose into ATP. There's other reactants and other products, and I'll write it on the board before we talk about it a little bit. In addition to talking about cellular respiration and the three parts, we'll look into the reactants, the products, other products, as well as the number of ATP that we make in an entire cycle of cellular respiration. We start with C6H12O6. It looks like a super long name, but essentially all that is is glucose. Glucose plus oxygen will result in the production of carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Energy in the form of ATP. I listed up here the six things that we'll take a look at. We'll look at the type of step of cellular respiration, one of three. We'll look at where it takes place within a cell. We'll take a little look at the reactants, so what goes in the input. And we'll also examine the main products, as well as byproducts that are produced during this reaction. At the very end, we'll take a look at the number of ATP, and then take an entire summary for how much ATP we've made in total. The first step of cellular respiration is glycolysis. The place that glycolysis takes place is within the cytoplasm. So I'll put up an image of a cell and I'll show you guys exactly where glycolysis occurs. So here's my cell. I'll draw in a nucleus as well as a nucleolus. You can also imagine the endoplasmic reticulum and I'll put in a very large mitochondria. So this is very important. Step number one, Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm. Great, so what goes into glycolysis? As you can probably figure out from the name, glycolysis literally means cleaving or cutting a simple sugar. So the sugar that we are cutting in this case is glucose. Glycolysis, lysis meaning splitting. So we're splitting up a sugar or more specifically glucose. This process is anaerobic, which means we do not require the presence of oxygen. The major product of glycolysis is a molecule known as pyruvate. While glucose is a molecule with six carbons, pyruvate only has three carbons, which means that a six carbon glucose can be broken down into two three carbon pyruvate molecules. And during this reaction in which glucose becomes two molecules of pyruvate, there are no really major byproducts that we produce. However, we will yield some ATP. Unfortunately, glycolysis doesn't result in a lot of ATP, which means we can't perform glycolysis for too long or rely on it too much for our source of energy. And the reason for that is because glycolysis only produces two molecules of ATP. Two molecules of ATP is really not a lot, which is why we need to perform various other steps during cellular respiration to give us the energy that we need to carry out our daily lives. The second step of cellular respiration no longer occurs in the cytoplasm. Instead, the two molecules of pyruvate that we just produced will move on somewhere else. So what will happen to the two molecules of pyruvate? They actually move from the cytoplasm directly into the mitochondria after a series of modifications. As soon as pyruvate moves into the mitochondria, we can begin the second step, which is known as the citric acid cycle. You may also see the citric acid cycle written as TCA, which stands for tricarboxylic acid cycle, or the Krebs cycle. Again, the Krebs cycle, or the citric acid cycle, does not take place in the cytoplasm anymore. We've moved on from the cytoplasm into the powerhouse of the cell, which you may remember is the mitochondria. The two molecules of pyruvate that we produced during glycolysis will then move on to be the reactants of our next reaction. As a result of the Krebs cycle, pyruvate will become a product. In this case, pyruvate will turn into some high-energy electron carriers. 
you may see these high energy electron carriers written as NADH and FADH2. You might also see them written as high energy electrons or electron carriers. I'll call them here high energy electron carriers and make a note that you might also see them as NADH or FADH2. Again, in the mitochondria, pyruvate turns into these high energy electrons. The byproduct of this reaction is carbon dioxide. Remember, when humans are breathing, we're eating sugar and breathing in oxygen. We always exhale carbon dioxide as a waste product. If anyone ever asks you where that carbon dioxide comes from, you'll know that the step in which this occurs is the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. Carbon dioxide gas is a byproduct of this reaction where pyruvate becomes these electron carriers. During the Krebs cycle, the number of ATP that we produce is still not a lot. It's still not a lot to, it's not enough to power the reactions of daily life. Unfortunately, the Krebs cycle is only able to provide us with two molecules of ATP. The third and final step of cellular respiration continues in the mitochondria. We're still in the mitochondria and we are going to use this time the high energy electron carriers to produce our product. If in the mitochondria we have these high energy electron carriers bringing electrons down a chain, and the only logical name for the system or the step in cellular respiration is the electron transport chain. Because what are we doing? We are moving these electrons from very low electronegativity down from carrier to carrier until our very last carrier is extremely electronegative. That's why it's chain. The main product of this reaction, unlike being an intermediate, is actually ATP. So all of this was done with the goal, the intention of producing a ton of ATP through the electron transport chain. As for the byproducts, I pointed out earlier that in the electron transport chain, we're pulling the electrons to carriers with increasing electronegativity. You might remember from chemistry class that the most electronegative atom that we look at in this reaction is oxygen. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor. When it accepts the electrons, it also accepts two protons or two hydrogen ions. When this happens, you have an oxygen and two hydrogens, you produce water. The water is the same water that we exhale in the form of water vapor with every single breath. So whenever we perform cellular respiration, we are exhaling carbon dioxide and water, which come from the Krebs cycle and the ETC. Most importantly, the number of ATP that we produce in this final step clearly outweighs the ATP that we produced before. During the electron transport chain, we produce an amazing 28 molecules of ATP. Some sources that you see may say that you are producing 30 or 32 ATP molecules, and the answer is it really does depend. It depends on whether you are using NADH or FADH2. It depends on the high energy electron carriers that are involved in the reaction. For the most part, however, you will see 28 ATP. Ultimately, we have two ATP produced in glycolysis from the cytoplasm. There's two ATP produced in the Krebs cycle, which happened in the mitochondria. And finally, 28 or 30 ATP produced as well in the mitochondria through the electron transport chain. In the end, we have two plus two plus 28, which gives us a total of 32 ATP. Let's do a full recap of cellular respiration. First of all, there's three steps. We have glycolysis, the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle, followed by step three, which is the electron transport chain. First, we started in the cytoplasm for glycolysis, where we went from glucose into two molecules of pyruvate. The pyruvate turned into high energy electron carriers, and this step happened in the mitochondria. There was some ATP produced during both reactions. Finally, 
these high energy electron carriers performed a very important step in which 28 molecules of ATP were produced. And as well, during this reaction, we have a byproduct, which is water. We moved from the cytoplasm into the mitochondria, and we began with glucose, and we ended with a ton of ATP. That's the whole goal of cellular respiration, is to go from our glucose into energy. And that's exactly how we did it. So we had one molecule of glucose, and it gave us in the end 32 molecules of ATP or energy. I hope this video was very helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to come see me in my office, or we can also communicate through email. Thanks for watching, and if you have any other video ideas, don't hesitate to let me know. I love making videos. Thanks, guys.